Hi, my name's Sinead Crumlish. I'm going to give you a tutorial on product photography today. Whether that's for photographs of your own art or possibly crafts that you make, more people are selling online now, so it really will help you to sell your paintings or your products if you have properly taken photographs. Sometimes if you mess around with them too much, you can change the colours, which can be quite disappointing for people then when they receive your product. Um, this is brought to you today through Bluebell Arts Project. If you'd like to contact them, their email address is bluebellartsproject at hotmail.com. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples of product photography. Product photography is anything that you're trying to sell, basically. So whether that's a painting um, or jewellery you've made, as I said, let's have a look. So here are some good examples. So this is a nice clean image. You can see the colours well. Hopefully they haven't been distorted in any way. Uh, there's nothing else distracting in the photo. You can see it nicely framed. Another example with a different colour background. It just gives you some ideas. Here's some stained glass. Again, it's not distracting in any way. You can see exactly what the product is, exactly what you're going to get. And here's some embroidery. Again, a nice example of how to sell what you make. Now I'm going to move on to some not so great examples. So I don't even know exactly what it is I'm looking at in this picture. It's very out of focus. I think it's possibly a crocheted basket or something, but I can't imagine this seller has done very well with this photograph. Again, I don't really know what this is I'm looking at. Find it online for sale. The big shadow doesn't help. They're going for the right thing with this one. Um, obviously this is a hand, hand crocheted top and they've put down a white sheet behind it, which is a great idea. But if you're then seeing, you know, the stuff that's behind the white sheet and the ground then it's kind of taken away the, the good work that they'd put in there unfortunately. This photograph's too dark. Um, it has a very cold hue to it. And again this, this wee, what is he, a snail? He's a little bit soft focus. Also the table's quite cluttered which takes away from the little product. Here's an example of a painting again. Um, glass is going to reflect, so even if you have the flash turned off on your camera, just any other light sources in the room are going to cause this effect that you can see. You can see the window behind being reflected and it takes away from the image. Again, this is the same thing. I'm, I'm assuming these are spotlights in the the ceiling of maybe the living room or whatever it is but it looks like little UFOs makes the photograph less professional so this is a professional setup this is like the ideal way to take your product photos now I know not everybody would have this at home um, so I am going to show you what I can, what I would do at home, what you can do yourself quite easily at a very, very low cost. So here's an example of um, a painting I took recently. So what you're aiming for when you're taking product photography is to give a very realistic image of what you're selling. Um, you want to make sure that it's nice and bright, but not so bright that it kind of blanches out the colours and makes it a bit too high in colour. Um, that could lead to a disappointed customer where, say, they've chosen this because a particular colour in the image is going to match something else in their room, their wallpaper, their paint, whatever. And then when your lovely piece of work comes, it's not exactly how they imagined, which could lead to to the customer maybe kind of explain to you that they're disappointed when it, it's not really a fault of theirs or yours. So the idea is get your photograph to look exactly like the image, exactly like your product so that your customer's going to be happy. So I would generally use some kind of 
background um, when I'm taking product photos for this series of paintings that I took they were quite large so it wasn't possible for me to have a background behind them so I've just tried to make sure that the background that I have used which is just a tile floor is as at least as, as least distracting as possible so for example I'm going to give you some examples of how you wouldn't take the same photograph so backlit when you have something against the window then there's more light coming from behind the the painting itself looks great but everything else in the photo just doesn't look too good at all um, likewise if you have a very dark background then that's kind of soaking up the light imagine bright colors reflect light white being the best one and darker colors absorb the light so it's casting really dark shadows and it's just kind of sucking all the light out <coughs> excuse me this is an example um, where the same painting was taken by a window but not a very big window it's not a very well lit area the light is coming in from one side so one side of the photograph up here around the top half is getting light but it's looking too dark over on this end try your best to have even light everywhere uh, another thing i would say is when you're taking paintings um, it's best to take it from a bird's eye view if if you were taken on the ground and that means from directly above if it's a very large uh painting obviously you won't be able to be directly above it because you'd probably get your feet in the photograph but try your best to get as high above as possible here's an example of trying to take a photograph using artificial light uh, have you ever taken a photograph in your house at night when your lamps are on and everything looks a little bit orangey the colours that come off there are quite warm hues. I'll be explaining a bit more about that later. Um, but again, the light is uneven. I took this photograph showing you the lamp so you can see what the, the light source is. In some ways, it's nice how it shows the bronze here, but it's not a great representation of the photo. Too dark on one side, too light on the other. Again, think about your backgrounds. Don't have messy, cluttered backgrounds. Um, it's too distracting and takes away from your product. This is an overexposed image. So if you had looked at any of my uh, videos previously for Bluebell, you would have seen um, the, the videos that I made on kind of how to use your camera to its best ability. So this, if you had overexposed the photograph, this is how it would look. So everything's a little bit too bright. You're losing some of the details, the subtle color changes. Here's a photograph that's underexposed, which means it's too dark. Um, overall, the image just looks too dark. This now, white balance. It's really important to make sure you're using the right white balance on your um, camera. Generally speaking, most cameras are pretty good when you stick them into automatic white balance. So check your camera settings, make sure it is in automatic white balance. The next few photographs I'm going to show you are when they're not in the correct white balance. So for example, this is um, cloud, when the white balance is set to cloud. So again, it's quite a warm hue. This is where, where the camera is set to flash. Not that I have actually used a flash, but just that the camera's white balance is set to flash. This is um, when the camera's white balance has been set to fluorescent. So it's very cold. It gives blue tones. This is shade. This is sunshine, so the camera is expecting a lot of light and isn't getting it, hence it becomes quite underexposed. Tungsten lighting, which makes the image look very blue. So first off, get to know your camera again. Make sure you've got it in all of the right settings. In the next class, we'll have a look at how to then get your camera into use and get taking those photographs.